Holy Toledo, what is going on with this build? Oh my goodness. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up and we put them back together and we massively increase your performance. We've got three insane builds. We've got an ultra budget, less than $500 build that does not have compatible parts. We've got a mid-range 1440p build that's seriously underperforming FPS wise, $2,000 gaming and VFX video editing PC that's spending money in all the wrong places. Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Best Buy's Top Deals. If you are looking for the best deals on TVs, electronics, or PC gaming, then Best Buy's Top Deals has you covered. From gaming laptops like this Lenovo IdeaPad 3 with a Ryzen 5600H and a RTX 3050 Ti for $599 to this 24-inch LG 1080p 144Hz gaming monitor for an insane $129 to this Razer Basilisk Ultimate Gaming Mouse for just $67.99 to deals on the latest phones, tablets, TVs, and more. Get your products fast, as soon as today, ready in one hour with store or curbside pickup. If you are looking for the best deals on the latest tech, then check out Best Buy's top deals using the link in the video description. All right, we've got No1586. They're planning to build their first gaming PC with a budget of $500 maximum. That's a very small budget, but it can be done. They can get the GPU where they're looking for a used RX 580 for about $100 on eBay, but they're not sure about the motherboards, the cases, everything else. Of course, they wanna do video editing, maybe some Blender, and play video games like Far Cry, Minecraft, Apex Legends, and Valorant. Of course, we want to do everything for $500. Can you help me, please? Let's see what you got. Okay, right off the bat, ouch, ouch, ouch. I see some big problems and you are not going to be able to get this thing to post. Let's talk about what incompatibilities I'm seeing here because you think, Jason, $500, what could go wrong? I mean, how many possible components could you assemble for $500? It can't be that many. And honestly, it's not. So there's a couple of key mistakes we just want to avoid. So we start off with the Ryzen 55. The Ryzen 5 5500, six cores, 12 threads. It's basically, it's a 5600G where the integrated graphics, for whatever reason, wasn't working, so they disabled it. You can buy the CPU for about $99 in the US, comes with included box cooler, performs about the same as the i3-12100F, and slightly better multi-threaded performance because it's got six cores instead of the four cores. That being said, you can only do PCIe Gen 3 on the CPU. It doesn't matter what motherboard you use, this is a PCIe Gen 3. CPU. Now that's fine for the graphics cards we're using as long as we don't do something silly and buy like a Radeon RX 6500 XT that does not run less than PCIe Gen 4. But the big problem is we need to be able to get a motherboard that's going to post with this CPU. Because the CPU recently came out, it's unlikely that a lot of these boards that have been around like the Gigabyte B450MH have a BIOS that's gonna actually work with it. If this was a 5600X or 5800X or any of the CPUs that previously came out, probably even the 5600G, then it would probably work with this board. B450 is fine. Remember, only PCIe Gen 3. However, this board is specifically not gonna really work for us because it doesn't have BIOS flashback. You went with perfectly adequate memory, 3200 CL16. I don't mind the Crucial P3. I think we could do a little bit better on a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD drive than $35. You put in $100 for the Radeon R RX 580 and in our recent GPU update, if you didn't check that out, I'll leave a link to it down in the video description. We go through all the best GPUs every month, what to buy based on price and performance. RX 580 is very competitive right now, about $95 you can get one. I don't love this case, the Thermaltake Versa H17. Look, it's okay-ish, it's got a little bit of airflow, but I only think it comes with like two included fans to it. It's all solid, it doesn't look very nice. Just for $50, I think we could do better. And unfortunately right now, power supplies, because everything is sold out around the holidays, Black Friday, a lot of power supply pricing has gone way, way up. That being said, the Cooler Master Master Watt 550 Watt 80 plus bronze, this is a C-tier rated one. It's semi-modular, really good unit. And I think this is about the cheapest one that we can find right now that's still adequate for our build. For $462, we still have some wiggle room in here. We might be able to up that GPU. I think we definitely need to get your mother that's gonna work for you. Overall, I think we can do a little bit better. Okay, I call this the $500 upgradable gaming 1080p PC because we're gonna be able to play 
pretty much every game at 1080p, really good frame rates. Let's jump into the build. Now, I did finish $9 over your budget. Trust me on this one. Let's start off with the CPU. I decided to go ahead and stick with the 5500. I tried a 12100 build. I tried a 5600 build. Uh, unfortunately, the motherboard pricing for the B660s is kind of sky high right now. So the 12100F didn't really make a lot of sense. So I decided to stick with the Ryzen 5 5500. But we need a motherboard that's going to have BIOS flashback. Otherwise, you're going to have to get an older CPU in order to update the BIOS on that older board that you had. So I went ahead and went with the Asus Tough Game gaming A520 plus Wi-Fi. It's a good board, entry level in all respects. The VRMs are pretty solid on it. It's got pretty good rear panel USB connectivity as well. And it has BIOS flashback button. That's the important thing. So we're gonna, of course, flash the BIOS on this in order to get it to update to a version that's going to run the 5500 and post for the very first time. It's super easy to do. We have a whole video on how to do it. Don't be afraid of it. Check it out. I'll leave it linked down in the video description under the how to build a PC playlist. So $99, again, only about 10 bucks more than you were gonna spend on a similar motherboard. So it's got a similar feature set, except this one's actually gonna work for us. I went in and stuck it out with your RAM and I did change out the drive. This budget level, we just want something that works. I honestly would even probably go with a SATA SSD if it saved me five or $10. It's just not going to because M.2s are super cheap right now. So I went with 512 gigabytes. That's the minimum I would go. 512 is kind of the minimum you need to make your PC really feel like a good gaming PC. And we found this one for $29. I know people often, why you use the Silicon Power A6? It just happens to be consistently the cheapest one. There's the Team Group MP33. There's a number of other budget NVMe SSDs you can look at as well if this one's not the cheapest for you. For the case, for the same price, I went with the Roswell Prism S500. Now people say, Jason, why the Roswell? This is just such a weird case. Yes, the airflow in this case is actually from the bottom, but it comes with four included RGB fans. That's amazing. Plenty of airflow for us. The PSU actually goes up here in the top, kind of like old school style. And then here's your build down here. Just make sure you don't put this on like shag rug or something so you don't clog up the bottom of this thing that's what you need for airflow but this is going to give us much better airflow and it's going to look a lot nicer as well for the gpu i think you could go for a gtx 1660 super right now you can find them for about 120 to 150 dollars so i put 140 in here you're just looking for a decent one even a one fan model is absolutely fine if you jump onto eBay. Even a GTX 1660, a non-Super or non-TI would be faster than the RX 580, by the way. And it uses quite a bit less power as well, which, you know, that's kind of an advantage for us. One for $135, there's an Asus Tough version of it. A lot of these cards were great GPU mining cards. That's why there's so many of them available for so cheap right now. So all told, again, we're gonna use the included box cooler on this, but for $510, not that much more than you were gonna spend, we're gonna get you a gaming PC. It's probably about 30% more FPS. It's actually gonna work when you build it, as long as you flash that BIOS, we're using the BIOS flashback. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we've got user QF7DN, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how to say all that. They live in the UK. They're struggling along with monitors, CPU coolers, power supplies, processors, PC cases. They're pretty much struggling with everything. Their budget is 1,250 pounds, UK pounds. That's just a shade over 1,500 USD. They don't care about RGB, but they really like the Landcool 3 case. Uh-oh, I already, I can already see problems here. They wanna play Paradox games, Apex, Legends, Overwatch, and maybe try ray tracing. They wanna go 14 1440p high detail, high FPS, and they haven't put a 1440p monitor in the build yet. So let, let's see what you got. Holy Toledo, what is going on with this build? Oh my goodness. $1,187 right now. And this build needs help. It needs a lot of help. Let's start off with some of the things. You, you said you wanted a 1440p gaming PC. Well, the Gigabyte G24F that you have in here, this is a perfectly fine 1080p monitor, but this is not 1440p. You cannot turn resolution up. Now you can always go down in resolution, but you can't go up because that would require a physical change to the monitor. I, I get this question on our monitor video all the time. No, you cannot go from 1080p up. You, if you want 1440p, you either gotta be by 1440p or you gotta buy 4K and then you turn it down. You don't wanna do that. We'd want 1440p. 
the other th just absolute disaster here is the Ryzen 5 4500. You're like, Jason, this CPU so cheap, 73 pounds. Oh my goodness, comes with include a box cooler. What's wrong with it? It's trash. It's basically trash silicon. It has almost no L3 cache on it compared to like even the 5500 or the 5600 non-X would be way, way better choices. The i3-12100F would be way, way better. L3 cache on the CPU is very, very important, especially when you're dealing with gaming and this, the 4500 has almost no none of it. We've got a totally overkill cooler. It doesn't even pull on a price right now because it's out of stock everywhere. But even if it was, I mean, this is not a cooler you need for a Ryzen 5 4500. The included box cooler would have been just fine. We've got a, a very expensive motherboard for our trashy CPU, which is the Asus ROG Strix B550. Perfectly good motherboard. I really like this motherboard. In fact, it's sitting in the build next to me. You went with 3200 CL16 memory. I don't mind that. And then the GPU, that's perfectly fine. 6750 XT. We'll have to see what pricing is looks like in UK right now. 429 sounds a little expensive for 6750. Another huge problem is we've got the Lee and Lee Land Cool 3. Now this is a great case. Don't get me wrong. And, and like the Lee and Lee Land Cool 2, it comes with actually an included rear fan on it, which is nice. But the big problem here is we're spending 165 pounds. Remember pounds, not dollars. So it's almost like 200 bucks on a case. And at this budget level, you just don't have the budget for it, especially when we're including the monitor in our overall budget. And then I'm not, uh, I'm not, just not crazy happy about this PSU, not because of the size of it, the size seems fine, but the EVGR BR unit, this is a C tier. For a build like this, where we're using a higher end GPU and we've got a slightly higher power draw, I'd like to see B tier or better here. And then of course the drive, a perfectly fine drive, one terabyte, SN 570, good budget level drive. Maybe we can do a little bit better, but for $1,187, you have a CPU that's absolutely gonna bottleneck that GPU that you've got, we've got way too much motherboard and cooling for it. The case is so expensive. We just, we, this build needs help. Okay, I called this a 1250 pound 1440p gaming PC setup. Remember this is about 1517 US dollars. And I actually finished five pounds over your budget, but I think you're gonna love what we did. Let's get you a proper 1440p gaming monitor. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the 1440p gaming monitors in the UK right now seem to be sold out. I am filming this during the holidays. So we've seen massive sell-throughs of a lot of stock of tons of things, including 1440p game monitors. That being said, the Dell S2722DGM continues to be one of the 27 inch models that I continue to recommend. Really good. Now it is curved if you want a flat, IPS panel, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more, but I think you're gonna wanna go with this when you see the graphics card that we got you. We ended up being able to fit in an XFX Speedster Radeon RX 6800, far more powerful than the 6750 XT you had in there, and actually capable of doing some ray tracing for AMD. Now listen, if you absolutely have to have ray tracing, you're gonna have to make a decision, then you probably need to go with an RTX 3060 Ti. It would be about 20 or 30 pounds less. That being said, you're gonna get significantly less rasterized performance. I would recommend not. I don't even think that kind of middle level of NVIDIA RTX 3000 series ray tracing is really worth it. Honestly, I would wait a couple of years until the next generation of GPUs comes out if you're really focused on ray tracing, but otherwise get massive frame rates right now with the Radeon RX 6800. We replaced your terrible CPU with a standard Ryzen 5 5600. This is absolutely fine. In the future, if you wanted, you could upgrade this to a 5800X 3D if you decided to get a faster GPU in the future or just you know give a little bit more performance out of your current GPU. That being said, the 5600 absolutely adequate for the this GPU. For the motherboard, I just felt like that B550-F was a little on the expensive side. I decided to go with something a little cheaper. Still has ALC 1200 audio codec, not the 1220 audio codec. I know some people don't like gigabyte motherboards. If that's you, the, I believe the ASUS Tough is about the same price, maybe just a little bit more. You can use some money going there. But basically for the Ryzen 5600, we're just looking for a higher quality motherboard that actually has BIOS flashback on it. And that is the B550 Aorus Elite AXV2. I stuck it out with the memory the Kings and Fury Beast DDR4 3200 CL16, really all you need, two by eight gigabyte kit. I chopped a little bit of price out of the NVMe drive. The Kingston NV2 is perfectly capable. DRAM list is an HMB style NVMe M.2 drive, one terabyte for only 56 pounds. That's a good deal. But for the case, you went totally insane with that Lee and Lee Land Cool 2. I tried to get you something that's kind of the equivalent of that, but a lot cheaper. <laughs> and that's the Aerocool Airhawk Duo. And this is a great case. I've seen a lot of reviews. They do not sell it in the US. 
I really wish they would. I think I've said this in previous Boost My Builds. This is a really super awesome case. Two 200 millimeter ARGB fans in the front, 120 millimeter exhaust. All you need right now, absolutely all you need. And the price is insane. In stock right now for 59 pounds instead of like 165 pounds. That's a huge cost savings at this budget. I told you I didn't like the PSU as much, so I went ahead and just bumped us up to the Asus Tough Gaming, 650 watt, bronze certified, but it's a B tier rated unit. Good unit, cables on this are really sleeve nicely. They've got a nice black finish to them. I've used Huff Gaming PSUs in a number of builds and I really do like them. You will note that we don't have a cooler in here. If you do want to throw in another 20 pounds or so, you can get something like the SE214, the id cooling. Otherwise, the included box cooler, absolutely fine to get you started. And if at some point in the future you want to upgrade the cooler, it's actually very easy to do. So overall, including the Steel Series mouse that I do really like, the Rival 3 that you found, 1,255 pounds only five pounds over your actual budget. And this thing is gonna give you an absolute monstrous performance with that 6800, downsizing the case, but keeping it super cool with the AeroCool Airhawk and upgrading that CPU from that rotten 4500 to a 5600, it's gonna get you now and into the future. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we got Sisa Ramahima. I hope I said that right. It says this is their first time building a PC. They really fell in love with our channel because it's got everything that they need. So they really appreciate our content. Well, we appreciate you too. Thank you for that. They're mainly building this PC for gaming and video editing animations using Premiere Pro and After Effects. Oh, Adobe. I know the Adobe universe all too well. Major headache sometimes, but hard to beat. My budget's around 2K, but they can go up with another $100, $150 if needed. Let's take a look what you got. Okay, I'm looking at your build here and it's taken me a second to digest all this. I am not loving this build. You're at $1,942. I feel like we've come well below our target performance level and we're spending a lot of money in places that we don't need to be spending it and completely neglecting critical areas that are not necessarily good for gaming, but they are good for our productivity suite of applications. Let's just punt through the parts one at a time. Let's actually start with a monitor though, Dell 2721 DGF. Look, it's a good monitor, but right now, for whatever reason, it looks like it's all sold out or something because the price is ridiculous. It's like $449. We can get a good 1440p creative flat monitor for, you know, about $300. i5 12600K, yeah, I mean, it's fine-ish, but it's more than a 5700X by quite a bit. That means we're going with more expensive motherboards, Z690. I just... I, I'm not loving it. 13600K may be better for our budget as well. That being said, 13600K, we probably have to bump our power supply up as well. So there may be some hidden costs. The cooler you have, the 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, it's not pulling any price in. I'm just gonna assume what, about $100. This would be a fine cooler for it. We could also just go with a cheaper air cooler. But I hate this motherboard. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Why? What's wrong with this B660, Jason? Yes, if you're gonna do an i5-12400F, get this or the micro ATX version of it, these are good motherboards. Boards. That being said, Z690 motherboards sell for the same price. And people may not know this, but the B660 motherboards are gonna still have that boost period. They're gonna have a limited boost period, even for the unlocked CPUs. So for the same price, especially if you're gonna get a cut down motherboard like this, a budget motherboard, there's cut down Z690 motherboards that will give you the full boost period with the same feature set for the same price. Go that direction instead. RAM, I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with this kit of RAM, uh, 3200 CL16, absolutely fine, but we only got 16 gigabytes of it. If you tell me you wanna do professional level creative stuff, get, 32 gigabytes of RAM, minimum 32 gigabytes of RAM. DDR4 is super cheap right now, and that is the correct memory to be pairing with a i5-12400 or even 13600K. Unless you're gonna do like a super max build, money on the memory is absolutely the wrong place to be investing it. That being said, you need capacity here when we want 32 gigs. Instead, you're going with this two terabyte hard drive. God, I would just stop stop it with the hard drives. Hard drives are on their way out. This, this is not gonna last more than a, a year or two. You want more SSD space. And I see what our problem here is that we've only got 512 gigs of NVMe SSD space and you're gonna go with that two terabyte hard drive. Have you ever tried to edit anything off of a hard drive? It's gonna, you are gonna cry 
like blood tears. It's gonna be a terrible experience. You're gonna absolutely rue the day you ever went this route. One of the big challenges with using creative programs is NVIDIA's absolute dominance. And it's not because of the GPU necessarily, it's more because of the third party support in those applications for NVIDIA GPUs versus AMD GPUs. It's just not there for AMD GPUs. Now, AMD is investing a lot of resources in changing that, but that's gonna take a while. I was very, very happy to see the progress they had made with the 7900 XTX and XT. That being said, we're not looking to buy that class of GPU. And unfortunately, the higher end NVIDIA GPUs like the 3080s and stuff has com completely sold out. 3070 is probably gonna be our limit here. So 569, this is actually not a bad pickup for us. Uh, Case, I just feel like we're spending too much on the Cooler Master Masterbox T500. Doesn't have a rear fan, so you're gonna need to add some more money to this case. It's a nice case, don't get me wrong, but when we're already throwing in a monitor and all this other stuff, $2,000 sounds like a lot of money until you add all these extras in. Our power supply, 850 watts. This is probably a very expensive 850 watt. It is A tier rated. If we do go with a 13600K here, though, we may need to up this to 1,000 watts. Overall, for 19 $142, I just feel like we're not hitting any of our objectives. This is not going to be a good PC for gaming because we're limited to a 3070 when we could buy a faster AMD GPU. And it's not going to be a great PC for doing all the creative stuff because you don't have enough hard drive space. You don't have enough RAM. We're like stuck in the middle. We're in the worst of both worlds. I think we can do a lot better. I call this the $2,000 Adobe Premiere and After Effects Plus gaming PC. Let's check this out because this thing is going to absolutely rock that productivity suite and it's still going to have really good gaming performance for about $2,000. Let's start off with the monitor. I went with something a little bit more sensible here, the HP X27Q, $250, great entry level 1440p gaming monitor, even good on the creative stuff. You could spend about $100, $150 more and go with a higher end monitor. I'll leave a link to our monitor video down in the video description. I decided let's go for broke. Let's go for a 13600K here. Let's get you some maximum performance. So in a couple years, this is still a very good gaming PC and productivity speed. PC so we can upgrade that GPU. 13600K, remember you want to get the K, not the K off. That has to do with when you do video export, only video export, It the Intel Quick Sync uses the integrated GPU with your dedicated GPU to export those frames faster. Doesn't help gaming, doesn't help anything else, just video export. For the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR4 for only about $40 more than the motherboard that you were going to look at, that B660. We're going to get a really capable, amazing motherboard. Now this is a Z690. You're going to need to flash the BIOS on this. It's got BIOS flashback on it in order to use the 13600K. Absolutely easy to do, but this has four M.2 slots. And let me tell you, over time, you're going to want to add more and more M.2 storage to this thing if you really get into a lot of creative and professional applications so you can increase the amount of storage in it. Also has ALC 1220 audio codec. Absolutely great, especially if you're doing video editing. So when you plug in, high impedance headphones into the front panel. It'll sound nice and crisp for it. It's got tons of rear panel USB connectivity, amazing VRMs. You could one day put a 13900K on this thing, no problem. $189, I really do like this motherboard. For the cooler, I went with a Thermorite Peerless Assassin. It's $40 for this thing. I mean, it's so ridiculously cheap. I just got another one of these. We're actually gonna use it in a build. In fact, a 13600K build coming up not too long from now. This is really all you need. Now you can, of course, go with a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler if you feel like this isn't cutting the mustard. This is, however, pretty high performance. We could also go up the ladder here to something like a Scythe Fuma 2 Revision B, or to the deep cool AK620. Those would be like the mega air coolers that I would put on the 13600K. Sucking out with the GPU, the RTX 3070, I really don't see any alternative to it right now. Again, I would consider maybe waiting for the 4070 Ti, see what price that comes out at. AMD right now, if this is your jam, they're, just, they're about a year to maybe two years away from actually competing with NVIDIA in all of these spaces or competing with some. If you use DaVinci, for instance, actually the 7900 XT is a better GPU than the RTX 4080 in DaVinci Resolve, but we're not talking about DaVinci, we're talking about Adobe Creative Suite. But the big thing for you was getting you more RAM and I got you an RGB kit and I actually bumped up the speed to 3600 CL16. This is gonna be tighter, faster timings than the that you were looking at should get a little bit more performance and honestly it wasn't that much more than just a 3200 CL16 kit so why not go ahead and grab the extra speed and RGB. I left your hard drive in here you can probably get rid of it if you want because we've got you a Patriot 2 terabyte PCIe Gen 3 drive this is a 
very fast PCIe Gen prosumer level drive with DRAM on it. Comes with an integrated heatsink on it. You don't necessarily need it, but you can certainly put it on there. Overall, absolutely great drive. Two terabytes of space where you had 512 gigs. This is going to make your life feel so much better. I cut some costs in other places. The deep cool CK560. We did a 5800X 3D build in this thing. I absolutely love this case. A couple of criticisms here on uh, some of the cable tie downs in the back, but nothing that you can't get around. And honestly, for $89, three ARGB fans and a black non RGB fan in the rear really hard to beat. I went ahead and just shaved a little cost off of our power supply, the Fantex Amp 850 watt unit. That is still A tier rated and I didn't end up needing to go with a thousand watt unit. You might decide to go with a thousand watt unit just in case you ever want to get a super high powered GPU in here. It's only like another 40 or $50. But overall for just about $2,000, you're going to get an absolutely right size 1440p monitor in here. You're going to get a 13600K instead of the 12600K. We've upped the memory speed. We've gotten you better audio and just a way better motherboard with a Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X. We've got you two terabytes of SSD space. Yes, I left your hard drive in there. You can keep using that if you want, but trust me on that two terabytes of SSD space. We right sized your case. We right sized the power supply and came in at your budget for $2,012. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you missed our GPU update this month, we go through the best GPUs you can buy right now. Check out this video. We go through everything that you need to know to get the best GPU for you during the holiday season. And we'll catch you on the next one.